What is up guys? Welcome back to another GeekerWatt video and in this video we're going to be covering the top five mistakes to avoid when you build your next or your first gaming PC build. I'm going to cover off what the mistakes are, how to resolve them and most importantly how to avoid them to make your next gaming PC as painless as possible. So without any further ado, let's dive into it. Now the first mistake to avoid actually comes before you even start putting the system together and that's in the parts that you choose. Now there's lots that can go wrong with your part choices, but there's a few key things that you guys should really try and avoid. The first is obviously making sure all the parts are compatible. The key points here is making sure the motherboard supports the processor out of the box with no kind of BIOS or compatibility issues. The second is making sure your CPU cooler fits in the case. It might sound obvious, but some CPU coolers are simply too tall for the case, or your case doesn't have enough radiator support for the all-in-one liquid cooler you want to pick, and those kind of issues really. Similarly, along those lines, you've also got graphics card clearance issues. There's two things to look out for with your GPU. The graphics card's width, so how many of the rear PCIe slots it takes up, and whether it overlaps out of its kind of advertised form factor. But more importantly, the length of the graphics card. On any case specification page, you'll have a maximum GPU length metric. This is normally in millimeters, around the 300 millimeter mark typically. So be careful and make sure you don't go for a massive GPU like an Asus Strix or an MSI Gaming X Trio card in a case that's super duper compact. The final thing to note in terms of components is making sure you don't try too hard to future-proof your system. Now this might sound silly, but if you spend all this money on a, you know, a really powerful power supply so you can upgrade the graphics card later, or with the idea that you can eventually upgrade and get some better parts, you're actually selling yourself short and giving yourself much worse performance in the short term. Future-proofing and upgradability is all good, but make sure you get the power that you want from day one, even if it means waiting a few more weeks and saving up a few more coins for your next game gaming PC. That brings me on to the next mistake to avoid, which is firmly within the build process. And that comes with your front panel connectors. The front panel connectors aren't just your power button and your reset switch, but also USB ports, whether it be USB-C, USB-3, USB-2. You've also got your audio ports for your headphone and mic or combo jacks. These are the fiddliest part of any gaming PC. And getting these right, while it's important to make sure the PC functions, isn't actually gonna set your PC on fire or cause anything overly dramatic. But it can be a huge letdown when you build your PC, you put your front panel cables in, you switch the power button on, and all that happens is you've got the power switch in the wrong place. I'll pop on the JFP1 diagram and examples of how to install these on your screen now. Don't rush and if you have to consult your motherboard's manual, don't be afraid to do so, especially for this fiddly little step. The next big tip for your build process comes with your CPU cooler and thermal paste. The first is to make sure you have indeed applied thermal paste if required. Thermal paste is a liquid substance that sits between your physical processor that looks a little something like this and the contact plate of your cooler. Thermal paste is all about making a seal between the two and allowing heat to efficiently transfer from one through to the other. Without this paste in the middle, you tend to get a bit of a gap between the two or they won't quite sit evenly on one another and that really affects heat transfer. That that can cause high CPU temperatures or instability issues. So make sure you remember to do this step. On that note as well, if your CPU cooler has a plastic film on the actual contact heat plate that goes on top of the processor, make sure you've removed this. Otherwise, you're trying to conduct heat through a piece of plastic, which um, well, never really ends well, does it? <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Mistake number four is all to do with your BIOS. There are lots of potential hiccups that you can have with your BIOS, but all of them are pretty simple to avoid and resolve. The first is BIOS version and incompatibility. On certain motherboards like Z590 or B550 or B450, you may need to update the BIOS to actually get support for newer CPUs. B450, for example, supports Ryzen 3000 out the box, but may not support Ryzen 5000. B550 is a little bit better, but there's one way to kind of ensure you against this, and that's to buy from a reputable retailer who shifts lots of units. Check the motherboard manufacturer's website, or alternatively, buy a motherboard that allows you to update the BIOS without a CPU installed. This will often be called kind of BIOS flashback or something along those lines and make sure you're good to go. The other thing to mention with the BIOS is your memory speed and hardware compatibility. Ryzen CPUs once again particularly like that fast RAM speed so make sure you go into 
your BIOS, enable XMP and crank the memory speed up. Similarly, your BIOS will also tell you as confusing as it can be for a first time builder, all the hardware you've installed. If your BIOS doesn't recognize a drive in a SATA port or doesn't think your M.2 drives in, it's probably not installed correctly. And if your BIOS isn't recognizing something, then Windows definitely won't. Which brings me nicely on to point number five, and that's your memory channels. Now, James, memory channels, what are they? Basically, memory channels are determined by just how you plug your RAM in. On a two DIMM slot motherboard with two RAM DIMMs, you haven't got anything to worry about. Fill both the DIMM slots and you're off to the races. But if you've got four RAM DIMM slots on your motherboard and only two DIMMs of RAM, which is completely fine, you want to install these in certain slots to give you a bit of a performance boost. This is all to do with sharing bandwidth and allowing the two RAM DIMMs to work together in harmony. Isn't it beautiful? Oftentimes, this will be the second and fourth RAM DIMM slots located here on this MSI B550 Tomahawk board. But be careful when you read the manual because often RAM DIMM slots start at zero and end at three, aka the first DIMM is actually slots zero. So when they say for dual channel performance, use DIMM slot one and DIMM slot three, they confusingly often mean the second and fourth physical slots on the motherboard. And with that, I think that pretty much wraps it up for our five mistakes to avoid. Uh, probably more like seven or eight in this video. But nevertheless, I hope it was insightful and makes your next or even your first gaming PC build that little bit easier. Thanks for tuning in and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Adios!